There's a pathetic new trend happening in the movie critic community, which is amazing. It's it's constantly shifting gears, and I, I find myself kind of caught in the middle of all of it. So I wanted to give my two cents worth, let you know where I stand, and maybe gauge what you guys are thinking in the comments below. I'm not gonna beat around the bush about this because if I'm vague, people will know what I'm talking about anyways. So what's the point? A prominent movie critic, Chris Stuckman, came out with a video recently talking about how he's not gonna bash Madam Web and instead he's gonna kinda go into the behind the scenes and studio interference and stuff that I think pretty much every movie fan has known about since Alien 3 and, and even prior to that. It's not a big revelation that movie studios interfere and have a say in how their final product turns out and they get scared and they make big changes and bold choices that often are bad. This is, this is not uncommon. Anyway, he comes out with this video and he's kind of, you know, angry dad getting upset, scolding critics that call movies trash and they really just bash on everything now and it's all ad hominem attacks and it's outrage culture and he has a point, of course. He has a point the same way I think the critical drinkers and guys over on that other end of the pool do. They're more on the outrage culture shit and less on movies themselves. There's obviously points being made by both. The problem I have is that this side over here just goes all in on attacking Disney and woke culture and Brie Larson and Kathleen Kennedy to the point where it's just, it's pathetic and lazy and doesn't really bring anything new to the table. Eventually they'll pivot away. Maybe they have. I truly don't watch any of this crap. I just see it in my feeds all the time. So maybe they have and, and everything's great over there. On the Stuckman side of things, he announced years back that he was making this movie. He's making a movie, awesome, good for him. I think that's great. I actually wrote a movie script myself. I'm on the, the third revision right now and then I hope to do stuff with it. I think it's phenomenal that YouTube voices are rising up. They're putting their money where their mouth is. They're getting into the game and they're trying to make something themselves. It's fantastic. So very good for him and it got fan funded. He has a big audience of people that love his stuff. Wonderful. What I don't like and I think is complete bullshit, and I still scratch my head how he does have a lot of the supporters still on his channel, is he came out with the video not long after that announcement and said, he's no longer gonna be criticizing movies the same way. He's only gonna review movies he likes. And he'll put criticisms in those videos, but not to the same point as something he doesn't. Okay, what's the point then of being a critic? What are you doing anymore? Oh, you're just championing a couple movies and and then on the other hand he says like I don't need to bash Madam Web because everybody else is doing it. Fine, but then you don't also need to praise a movie like Oppenheimer or Killers of the Flower Moon because everyone else is doing that as well. <laughs> like which, which lane are you going in, bud? Listen, people have different things they take away from different critics and those critics themselves have different reasons for doing it. I can only speak for myself, but the point of movie criticism to me is to put your voice out there, express your true opinions, inform people of what they should look out for in the flick, why you liked this, what worked about it, what didn't, and just have a conversation, have a dialogue. Granted, I also don't present myself as like an expert movie critic or a snob or someone that thinks his opinions are right, and this is why this movie works really well. I'll give that information, but not in a way that says like, you're wrong if you don't like it, or I'm right because I do. It's more or less just, this is what works for me and this is why it works for me. Take it for what you will. So when Chris comes out with the video saying we shouldn't be lazily bashing everything and saying it's terrible because there's a lot of people that work on the film. There's a lot of talent there behind the scenes. It's the studio's fault for the most part. No, I call bullshit. What maybe puts me in a unique situation is I have a full-time job. I'm a web developer and designer. I've been getting criticism basically since I got into the field. Your design sucks. This code doesn't work well. There's no preamble that says, hey, we know you're talented. We know you have it in you, kid. We know you're capable of good stuff, but this blows ass. They don't sugarcoat it. It either worked or it didn't and do it better next time. And that's how we should look at everything. That is how we look at everything. But now there's this rise in the last couple of years of critics, uh, critics, influencers coming out mostly. And for some reason Stuckman because he's making a movie right now and he doesn't want to shit in the pool that he's swimming in. 
where you don't want to hurt people's feelings because you could maybe one day be in a position where you're interviewing them on a red carpet or you're knocking on the studio's front door because you want to pitch a film. Hey Netflix, sorry I bashed on your last four exclusives and said they were hot trash, but I have one for you that's not. Yeah, that might not work. So what I've been noticing, especially on Madam Web, are these disclaimers in front of their review. Basically saying, hey guys, I'm about to rip this movie a new asshole, but before I do, I just wanna let you know the director's great, the actors are wonderful, the people that wrote this script meant well, it's all the studio's fault or something. It's just so disingenuous and kind of pathetic. It's such an easy way to score brownie points before you then trash the living hell out of something. Wh why? If a road isn't built well, you don't then call up the city and say, hey, listen, I know you guys meant well, I know you have good construction workers over there and pavers and whatnot, but this road leads into a pond and several people have drowned. So, Fuck you. Listen, a lot of people are involved in making a Mountain Dew product. There's like 75 different flavors of that shit. There's a purple one, there's Live Wire, there's a Halo thing. That might be the purple one. I don't know. Baja Blast. And some of them are horrible. You may argue all of them are horrible, but that's fine. But you don't then go, hey guys, I'm reviewing the new Mountain Dew. <laughs> Live Wire or whatever. But before I do, I just want to let you know, a lot of talented people work at PepsiCo. A lot of really special gifted individuals designed the label for this product and oversaw what was happening behind the scenes. And I don't fault the tasters who went in and gave this the thumbs up, but something went wrong somewhere. Okay, now let me tell you why this drink gives you cancer and is the worst thing that's ever been created ever. Hey, I was at McDonald's the other day. Their Big Macs sucked. But before I do that, I just want to give a shout out to my fellow McDonald's workers. I want to give a shout out to the managers pulling the late nights, the cleaning crew, the higher ups for getting that Big Mac out the window on time. Even though it was the worst thing that ever happened and I'll probably die within 24 hours of eating it, good on them for getting that burger done. It's so absolutely pointless and insulting. Imagine if Chef Ramsay, imagine if Ramsay was going out and he's like, yeah, this burger's raw, but I just want to let you know you guys meant well with it, we're gonna and um, we're going to keep the kitchen raw. open. We're I would love if you kept making the same raw, raw burger over and over. Maybe we'll just kind of modify it a little bit so people aren't getting sick. No! He goes in there and he says, shut it down. Switch it off. This burger's shit. I'm going to show you what a real burger tastes like. And that's what movie criticism is. It's passion, it's excitement, it's energy. It's getting out there in front of it and saying, listen, before you go to this movie, here's a heads up of what to expect. Before you go to this film, maybe think twice or absolutely go see this movie if you slept on it. I know the trailers didn't look great, but the final product is. What are we doing otherwise? We're sitting in a chair with a collection of fucking movies behind us and just going, Hey guys, um, listen, it takes a lot of work to make a movie. I know this, I have firsthand experience, so... I guess it all just kind of rubs me the wrong way, especially when it's from a person who did grow his audience and his channel by passionately raging about movies that suck and by giving week to week, usually first impressions before anyone else gets to see the movie. When you have a major audience and you have a platform to speak to, yeah, you can rebrand yourself and you can grow as a creator and do all this stuff. But I, I just find it a little hypocritical and a really easy way to get out of the game by just saying like, listen, I've grown, so this is what movie criticism should be and this is how we should approach it. I, I don't think there's a movie fan on the planet that isn't familiar with studio interference or drama behind the scenes. This isn't some deep, hardcore take. And I think a lot of people out there are just so overwhelmed with all the shit that's being made in Hollywood today because there is a lot of disingenuousness going on. There is a lot of shovelware going on. There's a lot of products going out for the sake of getting products out. That's why all these Disney Plus movies get made all the time and they seem to have no heart behind them. Yes, there may be talent there. There may be good actors signed on, but I bet if you asked a lot of these actors, they would just shrug and be like, eh, you know, it was a paycheck. I mean, I've, I've seen countless old videos of people doing that. Arnold notoriously said that about Terminator 3. He did it for the money. 
And you have to imagine a lot of the crew, even the directors at some points, are just doing it for the paycheck because you have to give one to the studio and then maybe with the deal, they'll let you make the movie you want to make. And I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's a negative in the slightest to get out there and say, hey, this movie's shit. And this is why we can't keep supporting movies like this, especially when it comes to Sony, whose cinematic Spider-Man universe that doesn't even have Spider-Man in it is such an embarrassment. We're passionate about what we love. I'm never going to make as much on this platform as I will making a website. There's just not money there for it. So instead, it's more about building an audience of people that like films and talking movies and discussing the pros and the cons, having the debates, having the conversations, not going so far this direction where everything's horrible and the worst and everything is just woke and cancel culture and all that, and not going this direction where you apologize for the studios or you're kissing a bunch of ass so you don't ruin a potential contact down the line. There is a lot of ugly stuff out there and not just in the movie critic space, all across the board, misinformation, hot takes that really are nothing more than rage clicks to get people to look at you online and feed the algorithm that's never ending and always rewarding people for the most polarizing opinions on the planet. We're unfortunately in this crappy system and have to play in this playground and try to get our voices out there while also maintaining some level of self-respect and not falling into the easy traps of going down a certain road that seems very easy to get views, revenue, and whatever else. And I guess I'll just leave it there. This wasn't, to, this was not supposed to be like a hit list on Stuckman, but if I didn't say his name or address the video directly, then it would have just come off as cowardly or whatnot. I don't know the guy. He's seems perfectly fine he obviously loves what he does and again mad respect to him mad props for going out there and making a movie that's awesome good on you but i do not like his approach to movie criticism i don't like the whole white knighting of hollywood and all that stuff i think that no one's above criticism i like talking about movies the way i talk with my friends i i have kids and they have no problem telling me if they don't like something. And obviously there's no subtlety there with children. They'll tell you exactly how they feel. And in a sense, it's liberating. It's refreshing that they don't think about it in the sense that adults do, where you have to kind of hide around a bush and maybe whisper something and then go back into the cave. It's a bush and a cave in this scenario. But they'll just tell it how it is. Right or wrong or ignorant or otherwise. <laughs> Okay, that's all I have for you. If you like the commentary, if you like the honest take, uh, let me know. Like the video. Please subscribe if you haven't. I post tons of movie reviews, rants, live streams, everything movies all the time. Would love to have you stick around. If you really like what I'm doing, I have a Patreon. You can be a YouTube Join member. There's a super thanks icon down there somewhere. And hopefully I didn't piss you off to the point where you're like, well, how dare you go against Stuckman? I'm not going against Stuckman. I just disagree with the message. I disagree with this take here. All right. Thanks a lot. Hopefully I see you next time.